All right, all right, all right. Welcome everybody once again on my YouTube channel. Today from the back seat of my car here, since I was out driving a little bit around, it's always good, you know, for new ideas and that your mind wander a little bit at times or going for a walk, depending on what you prefer. So a topic um, a lot of people ask me about is like, um, how did I start from, like, where did I find a mentor or who was my mentor and what did I learn? and how important was it and i want to touch on a couple of these questions today and walk you through yeah a little bit my story my background my history um i made like a little bit of few notes here so just in case you see me look down you know why um so first of all i want to start off by saying is that i wish i wish we would have had the opportunities that your generations have today you know um connecting with someone a mentor basically or someone that is good in his job that you admire that you look up to that you want to learn from was much more complicated and not even too long ago plus it wasn't really accessible you know like and not scalable at all you know like how many mentees would a bank director have or a hedge fund manager you know but now that we're able to scale digitally um so many more people can benefit from these kind of relationships, these kind of informations, these kind of guidance. But at the end of the day, and this is what I really want to want to add here, um, I definitely had some people in my life that um, I would call mentors that are important in the sense of who I made myself, though. You know, so whoever your mentor is, you're gonna fail if you're not if you're not walking the walk, if you're not do what you really need to do, because what a mentor does is he doesn't solve the problem for you. What a mentor does is he gives you the right direction, the right path and supports you with some feedback so that you can work on solving it yourself, you know? So if you think that a mentor has anything to do with, you know, um, an autopilot to success, then I have to disappoint you. However, you know, the problem is that we're not we're not living in a world of shortage of information, right? We a lot more live in a world of shortage of, um, I would even say, um, being on the same page of incentives wise. Because a lot of people, especially in the trading industry, that sell you um, knowledge or, or yeah or, or yeah knowledge, trading signals, uh, magic strategies, all of these things, they are not in the business of giving. They're in the business of taking because. They, they, they're not supporting you and really learn something. You know, they're, those are schemes, those are narratives, those are stories, more often than not, just to grab your dollar. So, and I think in this new connected world that we live in, maybe even in sooner than we thought in a, in a web free type of world, and this is a different topic for another day. Um, I think the most important or the most valuable thing that you can possess is who you are. You're basically building like a like a tag score, like a game attack score or something, if you want. Um, now, I don't want to sound let it sound all George Orwell style, you know, like like a credit score, and then nobody can get ahead and stuff like that. No, but in general, um, the internet doesn't forget, you know. And um, the good you do, the bad you do, these things they're kind of more and more, um, uh, you know, uncoverable. So if you're in the business of taking from people while selling bullshit, it's just gonna get out a lot more faster. But to get back to the topic, so how did I start? So just quick one for those who don't know. The way I got into this industry, trading industry, um, is that um, I was a musician. Uh, I used to do music. I said we had a top 10 charted at the time. Today it's all Spotify. Nobody knows what charts are anymore. Anyway, um, made some money, trusted a recommendation, a trader at the time, lost all my money in a day, trusted the trader, screwing with my mind one more time, got my parents' retirement money, put it on top, lost it in a day or two on top, boom. So I started from six figure debt and I really had to work my way up. So when I was in this most, let's just say, uh, the, the worst moment in my life, even though also the most transformative and also in that sense, one of the best ones in retrospective, even though very painful, um, 
my first and most important mentor, I would say, is my father because he's an immigrant. He came to um, a, a, a yeah, foreign country. Um, he became um, he went to the university there and he's done it all by himself. Like he's a 100 percent self-made man. He became a doctor, a dentist, uh, um, run his own practice. And, you know, it's not like a business that you scale. You know, you run ads and you scale and you put money on it. It's like literally this this man worked his his own body off his spine, his, his everything in order to develop from a third world country to a, a doctor in a first world country in Germany. So th there were a lot of things that I hated as a child because I had more of a strict father, you know. I didn't grow up in a, in a spoiled fashion at all. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, we couldn't open the fridge. <laughs> you know, you need to know what you want before you open it. But how? I cannot look through it. Well, <laughs> remember what's inside. Anyway, this is just like little anecdotes here. But in general, um, I learned a lot about discipline, about, you know, being your own man, needing to push things through, even in the darkest moments, be uh, still hopeful, but mostly hopeful about your ability that you can solve or fix things or work things out or learn things or become better than your next man, you know, like, why, why would you not? Like, what, what, what is it that you're missing? You know, you don't have a brain, you don't have hands, you know, you know, if God has given you all these blessings, why would you not be able to achieve something that someone else has, you know? So... I learned a lot from that. And when I was in my darkest moment, literally having lost it all, um, I, I said like, okay, I still believe that this trading thing, it can work, that there is something to it, to how, how people make money with it. I need to learn it. So I started literally as an intern for a private German bank at the time. And um, it was a bit of a, of a coincidence because they wanted to open an office in Berlin. So I started there. And I had no idea about the Forex or anything. But that was actually my advantage because um, the bank wanted to set up a Forex desk. Also, they were, for the first time, wanted to do it. They were like, let's just say what Forex brokers are today. They were trying to do that, yeah, 20 years ago or something. And um, they weren't all too successful from a scalability perspective because the digital age scaled later while I was there uh, because I, I left there a few years after that. But because... I needed to build it from scratch and there was nobody really in the office I could rely on or any of that. I just had this boss at the time and he's literally, he's one of my other mentors, I would say. He's like from a movie, man. He's this grumpy old man with a golden heart who smokes 24-7. And um, he was, let's just say, from a communication perspective, a very tough man. <laughs> and whoever uh, knows my history and knows probably who I'm talking about. Great guy. I love the guy, seriously. And he's always been extremely fair with me. I never had any issues. Is he the most, let's just say, pleasant person to you? No, but that has also, it's, that's what I want to say, you know, hardships, difficulties, edges in life are there for you to take advantage of them, not to feel offended by them. And this is really what I, he was another mentor that would not hand me anything. You know, I would have to look at what he's doing and try to decipher of what it, what it is. But because I was in a position of building the whole Forex um, operation there, I needed to learn everything. Like, where does liquidity come from? What is a bridge? How does technology tie into each other? Um, how does MT4 connect to all of that? Um, what is a B book? What is an A book? Um, what is the difference in the license that you have? Can you be book? Can you A book? And um, what is a good trader? What is a bad trader? You know, where do you get clients from? All of these things, you know, I, I literally had to put it all together and understand it completely from scratch. What is a prime brokerage? You know, how do you connect liquidity to your prime brokerage accounts? How do you read the fucking statement? You know, um, for all of those who, who were... Uh, um, I don't want to use names, but anyway, there was this big um, uh, prime brokerage, and um, basically all the FX companies was there were there um, in London, and and just to read their statement, they couldn't even answer you questions about their statement themselves, how you read it. I just had it by the way the other week. I was asking for some PL confirmation from one of these old school UK brokers. <laughs> they just avoid your email. <laughs> they don't. That. If you ask, how do you read the PL? How do you calculate this and that? No, no, they can only tell you, well, read the statement. That's it. So here I was, not settling for, oh, just read the statement because bullshit. I need to learn it. I need to understand it. I cannot just say, well, read the statement. Like, okay, I can read numbers, but how do they actually happen? What's the calculation behind it? And, and, and. So 
I learned a lot of these years there. Also, um, since my uh, business more or the, the, the niche I focused on was a lot more to connect. I, I wasn't looking, you know, when I was working for the bank for people that wanted to trade for themselves, but I was looking to connect fund managers, traders, <clears throat> good traders with um, <clears throat> money that uh, people that have money with capital. So, um, so I was always, you know, analyzing trading strategies um, and also understanding the requirements of investors. Um, what is it that they're actually looking for? Um, and obviously, we had a couple of rodeos here and there. Not all of them worked out. You know, I'm not going to lie here and just say like, oh, every trader we worked with always made money. No, absolutely not. It got me frustrated to a point where I also started to... to um, you know, uh, doubt that anyone could ever make money with, with trading, you know, really. But eventually I still figured it out, you know. Um, I've worked with hundreds of traders, you know, uh, if not even more from all over the world, all sorts of strategies. You know how many times I have reviewed or analyzed or calculated through some sort of an averaging strategy of a martingale, of a grid trading. <laughs> so when people come to me today with grid because that's the latest shit in, in, in crypto at the moment, I tell them, yeah. It's possible. However, you need to understand, you know, that the, the assets that you trade in a, in, a, in a certain range, they need to correlate well and they need to have like, you know, um, um, they need to retrace well as well. Otherwise, you know, if they go too far out, then the leverage or, or your grid's going to implode. And that's what uh, I've seen so many times happen. And I've even, even you know, um, had, uh, there was the Swiss trader, he, he, he owned a Formula One um uh, uh like the whole team and everything in the 80s and um so so that's also a guy that i learned a lot about strategy development he was extremely obsessed of developing strategy so here i learned a lot about you know what is uh, what is the structure of a trading strategy you know um also, and that helped me in two regards, obviously in order to structure something myself, but also in um, analyzing other traders' strategies better, you know, try to a lot more get an idea of what is it that they're trying to do, um, because there's only so many concepts really, guys. There are not a million concepts that we can choose from. There's only a million ways to capture certain concepts. Um, and um, so this is what I learned a lot there. And, and also, um, as, as I worked with more professional investors, I learned also the language of those guys and also the requirements. So when you speak of a hedge fund, for example, um, usually you're not looking for a strategy that has a naked exposure. You're looking for a strategy that is um, where you're covering the downside as well. Ideally, and those are still today my, my favorite strategies, you want to go market neutral. You know, if you have a market neutral strategy, some sort of an inefficiency, arbitrage, whatever in the market, that's something that um, ideally it's scalable and not too many people know about it. Then that's something that can make you um, a lot of money because especially those people with, with big money, they understand these things and they're, they're, they're looking, they're, they're, they're more quickly to, to convince to put money on it, especially as it's, as it's more an opportunistic type of thing. Now, can you make money with these, you know, let's just say normal strategies, um, uh, directional trading, um, technical analysis, all of these things? I would say yes. However, you need to definitely combine them with something else, you know, whether it's uh, seasonality or other database quantitative um, information can help you a lot to not just, you know, because... Again, if you're only basing your, let's just say, um, trading decision on a technical analysis alone, then you're judging something that is more dimensional by one dimension only. You know, you're not looking at the full picture. And that's why you need to add more reliability. And this is also where I learned a lot about um, backtesting and how important it is. For me, backtesting is not just, you know... Um, you know, play with the numbers until they fig until they work out. Backtesting has a lot to do with really, you know, understanding the pattern, the strategy, the idea, and applying it again and again and again. And then also the 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 way we encourage backtesting in in the mentorship is not just you know have it on a chart, but then also use it as as a means of trade um, or simulating life trading in the past. Um, Forex Tester is a great um, tool to do that. So. You know, and this is then uh, in time how you really learn from from a lot of people from the different inputs, you know, in, in your life. I learned from very senior people that were very, let's just say, inaccessible, not really friendly. <laughs> but actually, they were very good still. Like, that was the best that was available at my time. And it's really also something that I want to say here. I think that... Um, 
the world is transitory and i see myself like like um um you know like one wheel in a gearbox you know um i, I if i look at those people that were my mentors basically what kind of mentor um material they had <laughs> at their time or even before you know we're already in a very good place so you have to take learn your environment really and but because at the end of the day it's really structural work that you do um and um you know the, the that's why you need to do the whole backtesting, the whole data-based approach that I'm very much a vocal advocate of because when you have something that you have proven to yourself based on data, then you're not looking for validation. You're not looking for some, and nobody else can sway you or really, you know, uh, make you insecure. Obviously, you know, if you're looking for um, many opinions, you're going to find them. In Germany, we say, you know, like three people, five opinions. Uh, and, you know, you, you want to get yourself in that kind of um, situation. This is what most people do. But if you develop your edge, your idea, um, and you train for it, you know, and you know the statistics of it, you know the reality of it, you know also the, the let's just say, the real world application of it, how, it re how you react emotionally and, and um, how you improve on that and, and how you stop to let yourself being tricked by yourself in a way. Um, and then you are, uh, you're not needing someone else to tell you, oh, should I buy, should I sell? You know. You have a conviction, a clear one, and not one that you just came up with, uh, you know, uh, um, arbitrarily, but one that you actually developed, you know. And um, so, uh, and this is something that I learned over over decades, if you want, like that, you know. So the, this trial and error um, process, the, um, you know, I, uh, one one of my kids is four years old, for example, you know, and and what he loves to do is he loves to tinker with things. He loves to try to combine one thing with another and sometimes he comes with completely you know not fitting um toys and show me how he combined them put them together and he could spend literally the whole day trying to make things fit that don't really fit just trying to understand them look at them so and i think that aspect of tinkering of trying things out um not be afraid of 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 um, how it should be or how someone else taught it to be. This is why I don't believe in you cannot just take someone else's strategy and expect to continue to be with it successful forever. Because at some point it was it will lose efficiency. Efficiency it will not be as effective as it used to be. And then you're kind of stuck because if you only learned that one magic card trick, you don't know how to create a new magic card trick. You know, that's why the, your ability to tinker with things, to take notes, be an engineer, you know, like know the, the, um, um, uh, the aspects of the engine that you build, you know, uh, which, which, um, which part of your strategy functions um, or serves which function, you know, and this is where experience comes from. If you've done this hundreds of times, you know, on a monthly basis for years, then then that's that's something that's just, you know, um, I don't care about my opinion. I need to challenge my opinion. I need to validate it or I need to invalidate it on a constant basis with data. And this is how, you know, you become experienced because you stop looking for the holy grail in the wrong place. You put in the work, you get the experience, you learn from your experiences, you know, and you you see that your application actually becomes better and better and better. And at some point even, you know, um, uh, out uh, outshines the rest. And this is how, you know, you, you, you know that who you are and what you do and what you're good at, what you're not so good at. This is why the journaling, all of these things that um, we do in, in the mentorship is really all about bringing you all the elements necessary that you find your point of equilibrium, that you deal with all these dynamics and be able to apply them. You don't need to be afraid. Your data, but you're not just cocky confidence or fake confident. Your confidence stems from real data that you have created. Um, and that is where your confidence comes from. And what I do in my mentorship is also, you know, I help my students do exactly that. Because in the beginning, they're a little bit shy. They don't know what to do. And they're looking for direction. This is what a mentor is for. So, hey, I gave you now um, how do you start? We have the st strategy starter pack, six weeks, where you really, you know, uh, get told everything that you need to know with examples, and even examples that you could start to copy, plain as they are, um, so that you understand all the elements, all um, the building blocks of how to build a strategy, how to go with it, how to backtest it, how to trade it, all of these things. Um, but more importantly, it's for you to also to understand these sections so that you can start to um, make your own out of them. I have a number of students that started with, you know, known trading 
concepts from other mentors and then essentially um, made them a, a, a variation of that of their own you know and um, which which in my opinion is, is, is absolutely doable and possible you know so because the process is always the same and plus you're very much able to come up with new ideas new strategies short term mid term long term um, you know different markets different approaches so there's really no way why, why um, it, it, you can only benefit, only benefit, you know. Um, and and I had I learned from from really at the time um, industry giants, you know, like like the guy I learned from in Germany, for example. Um, he uh, he was one of the first ones who actually built his own bank out of nowhere, you know. Um, and then uh, the, the Swiss guy, <laughs> like I said, he bought a whole formula one team at the time so insanely rich and successful with trading um and those are kind of guys that i um how did i get to them by hard work really hard work and and uh, being you know um you know people say luck is when circumstance meets preparation so you may you know miss out on a lot of circumstances you may think you have you're not getting the chances that you need in the world but maybe you're not prepared enough to grab the circumstances as they come your way because i don't think there's a shortage of of opportunities in this world i think there's a shortage of resolve to be prepared enough so that you can take advantage of them so um and it took me years to, of work you know i was living with my wife in a, in a small two-room apartment um, and the one room was was you know our our uh, living room my office the dining room all of it you know like then we had a baby on top so anyway you know like um I, I definitely went through difficulties in life and persisted and f f focused on the right things that are essential and, and for you in order to be able to make the right progress, you know, because you can hate things as much as you want. It's not going to make you <laughs> any change, it's not going to give you any, any improvement, right? Um, so just, you know, bitching around, looking for easy ways um, is a sure, sure path to remain exactly in that loop. That's my opinion, you know. So this is why I don't teach, you know, um, holy grails, overnight successes, um, all these 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 um, nice things that a lot of naive, insecure people buy. Because that's really what these offerings do. They prey on your insecurities and take your money for it. Um, so that's why I'm also like very... Um, I'm not like how can I say like my last video you say you see where I talked about brokerages like the I think the 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 model the renumeration model how the the brokerage industry makes money um predominantly these days is not a good one in my opinion because it really supports um wrong incentives um and but anyway to get back to this topic so if you're looking for someone that can help you out in in the respect of trading with everything that you need to learn how trading really works how you develop your own trading strategy i support all my students individually with their trading strategy development in a written fashion also you know we want to keep a record of everything that you do um and and so so this is where i have specialized on you know um, everything that i wished my mentors would have given me a little bit more of is what i'm trying to give my students more of at the same time you still need to do it by yourself for yourself with your own hands you know so you can become capable you want to be self-sufficient right so that's why you need to be able to do it yourself um and that's what what i do in, in the mentorship and really you know try to bring trading and and um and a lot more, um, yeah, real way, how it's actually done, how you can have a chance of winning, you know, um, because there are people out there that develop great strategies that actually work, you know, that make a lot of money. M these strategies may not work forever, but they make may make a lot of money in, in a couple of years, you know, and then you can develop into something new, something else, because um, now you're probably not needing like 200, 300, 400 percent a year anymore, uh, but you'd be very cool with 20, 30 percent, and then you find much better suiting strategies to achieve that with bigger capital or whatever you need a requirement is this is a um a progress a process that never really stops you know um especially now with how this this uh, digital age is now even opening up even more you know uh, let's not even talk about like uh, cryptos is not just trading or chasing some shit coins there's there's literally a new whole financial system being built and you know but all of these things require the same and the, the same qualities you need to be able to work with data yourself you need to be able to trust yourself you need to be able to work to you know discern through data to prove validate invalidate things you know try them out correctly and not just um based on on hunches and hopes and 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 uh, um, insecurities right so 
this is what I wanted to tell you. You know, I'm I'm very grateful for uh, the mentors that I had in my life for sure. Um, I, I I I wished they, there was at the time more they could have you know helped me specifically so this is what i'm trying to do in now i never thought i'd become a mentor guys it's not really you know i didn't wake up in the morning saying like hey i want to be a training mentor it just happened organically especially you know in this environment of 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 fakesters all around you know there's there's literally it's not so difficult to say the truth you know um so what I'm doing is I'm really trying to give my students more of that specific help that I didn't get at the time. Uh, but at the same time, you know, put them as much under pressure as needed so they can come up with the solutions themselves so they become capable to do it themselves. You become capable to do it yourself, you know. And um, and I think we're, we're on a great um, uh, path here. Uh, and and uh, I'm, I'm literally extremely, you know, um, excited to see where this might be going from here. You know, like I said, I mean, everything is transitory, and and the legacy I want to leave is I want to be that someone that that really brought reality to the trading um, industry and helped to spark new talent in that industry, giving them early on the right tools, the right perspectives, the right information, so they can build the right skill set early on in their career, and then go from there. Because the magic that happens afterwards, what kind of strategies you come up with, what kind of successes you may build is you guys you know and every new generation builds something grand you know why wouldn't it be you why wouldn't it be you if you stop believing the lies of you know the easy and the fast kind of getting to it but instead learn the, the 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 real skills you know and then go with your fresh minds fresh perspectives new opportunities digital world you know and and why would you not be able to build something you know you absolutely are and i'm i'm this is what i'm mostly you know excited about to see how my students going to do in 5 years 10 years 15 years you know because i definitely plan to continue to be around so yeah that's my video today about a mentor if you have any questions you know and i missed anything let me know use the comments do you like this uh, video please leave me a like and um, also comment you know maybe your experiences help me with the youtube algorithm as they say would be great and yeah thank you very much for watching <laughs>